All right, all right. Good stuff. And we are recording. We're good. All right, so um, today's lesson and breakdown, uh, again, we're going to go over the biblical Hebrew real quick. And then after that, um, I have a, a brief lesson called The Secret Place. All right. Um, there's some things that the Most High needs to do in each and every one of us. Um, it's very important in order for us to move forward like we need to. All right. So let me go ahead. Um, again, is my microphone good? Can you guys hear me? You good, huh? All right, good. Yeah, you sound yes. good. Yeah, you're good. 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 Appreciate it. Yeah, you're good. All right. Let me see if I can get my video going. All right, can you guys see the screen? Yes. All right. I keep forgetting that Zoom be crushing your computer memory, so it takes a little while to get started. All right, so uh, we're gonna go ahead again, do a brief recap and then go on from here. So again, we're doing the understanding biblical Hebrew one character at a time. Again, uh, this is a direct ministry of Biblical Hebrew Awakening, the birth of a nation. Uh, we're going to go over the Aleph Bet or the alphabet in the Greek. First recap question. Can anybody tell me what this paleographic um, image means? What does this mean? The Hebrew all. Strong leader. Authority. Authority. Authority, strong leader, what else? What else can it mean? Or what other derivatives of that can it mean? Staff? Right. Say again. Staff? Um, authority, the staff Power. is an authority, that's good. Power. Power, strength, strength. Power. strength. strength. Head. First. All right. Absolutely first. All right, so let's go over that again. Again, this pictograph is of a ox head. It, it exemplifies strength, power, um, a leader. It also goes over instruction because when you have an oak and, uh, um, a yoke of oxen together, you have one that's more experienced that leads the younger in the ways of how to plow the fields, right? So. Again, there is the um, Paleo-Hebrew breakdown, all right? Aleph, Lamed, and the Pe. Also, Aleph in Arabic. And this is the root where we have Alpha in the Greek. When you have the spelled out Al, which is a Al and a Lamed, that signifies, like was said earlier, strong authority, strong leader, strong ruler. Um, those are the functions or those are the, um, the ideas you get of when you think of a, a strong, mighty ox, okay? Fast forwarding. Next one is Bates, Bates. What, someone tell me what, is bait mean? What's the definition of bait? House. 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 Okay. What else? Family. Family. Inside. Inside. What else? Uh, is it like covering? No, but it could be in regards like, to a function of a covering, but um, like protection. It could, depending on the the context around it, it could, yes. 
Have you ever heard it affiliated with Door? No. Could it be surrounding? Mm, enclosure. Enclosure. Yeah, More enclosure. Than surrounding. But yeah, enclosure. Okay, what else? These are good, good points. I have inside, but I'm not sure if that's from previous notes. That's correct. It's also inside or with or within. Within. Now, um, what I will say is this. What you guys are doing right now is how you should be thinking when you're trying to understand the Hebrew writings, when you're looking at them in the Paleo Hebrew or the pictographic Hebrew. That's how you should be thinking. You should be thinking in those terms. Um, but you, you want to anchor it down and make sure you're looking at what is the function of the pictograph. What's the, the function and the characteristics of the function? All right. So when you break that down, all right, it goes into a tent, house, dwelling place. Now, what resides within or inside the house, tent, or dwelling place or enclosure? It's going to be the family. Right. And so absolutely. Um, that's, that's, um, a situation where you have the, the bait represents family. It represents the house of the family. Um, it's so vitally important that, you know, when you have guests that come into your home, they are now under the covering of your family. They are now one with your family. Okay. So, um, it's one of those things where um, you look at Lot and you look at the Malachim that came to visit him and they were going to go ahead and just lay out and rest in the square. And Lot was like, nah, you don't want to do that. Come into my house in inside my house. The safety of the house. Right. And so, um, again, you basically have it to where um, your guests, those friends now dwell within your house. So that's why when you're looking at the um, character or pictographic element of the bait, it references family, home, house, um, tent, enclosure, all right? And um, it also is the root uh, word, I hate saying word, but it's all we can kind of understand. The root word in regards to when you are saying in, with, or within in Hebrew. So like when you say, Bahashem Yahashua HaMashiach. All right, so ba or ba, in, in within, Inside, right? Ha being the the Shem name name. Yahushua, Yah salvation. Ha the Messiah, Messiah. So a lot of times you got salvation these the these Messiah. these folks that you know they they rattle off whether they're they're talking um, Lashon Kadash or they they're whatever. They say you know Bahashem Yahushua Mashiach, and you're like what? I have no idea what they just said, uh, but now you can at least break that down. What they're saying is in the name of, there's really no of, the modern Hebrew has an of, but in the name, y'all salvation, the Messiah. All right, and so bait also is where we get the Greek beta and get our Latin romanticized letter B is from the bait. It's also where we get the number two. All right, hey, uh, Zachariah. So you were right. I had mentioned it last time in the chat, but you probably didn't see it. Uh, gams is in relation to legs. Okay, okay. Yeah, it was, it, honestly, it was, uh, it was an old uh, TV show where they were, it was in Living Color where one woman was supposed to be from the old school days and she was always black and white in the 90s. And right. she said something about uh, a set of gams talking about legs. And I'm like, where did they get gams for legs? That isn't... And when you said that that was gam and it was foot, it was like, 
since this is the root of all language, yep. like that's what I, it made me think. Hey man, I was cracking up when you said that. Though. I'm like, eh, my, my okay. bad. I could have put it better. I could have put it better than that. No, you did. A, uh, you but, said it. You said it perfectly. You actually said it perfectly. I thought it was hilarious. So I was like, you know what? I never <laughs> looked at that. But afterwards, I did look it up, and uh, yeah, that's um, uh, a more European. Uh, they basically ripped off um, from the Greek, going back to the Hebrew, gam, and then gamma in the Greek, and then uh, that Latinized, Romanticized uh, gams is legs. So when they say, oh, she got a good set of, of gams, that's, that's exactly what it was talking about, legs. So I thought it was kind of funny. Yeah, praise. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, this is still influencing things hundreds, <laughs> thousands of years later. All right, so again, yeah, um, we have one on this one right there. This is a relation to a foot, all right, the gam, all right, and then also it became the gamma in the Greek. Um, in the Arabic, it's gimo. Hmm. And then the uh, pictographic script to write out gam is the gam and the mem. So combine these reference um, walking to water, assembling to the water, um, drawing to the water, um, that type of situation. And again, here's the breakdown. To see uh, this in more detail, go back to the previous lesson we did last Shabbat to break that down. I'm trying to just kind of go through to get to the next part. All right. The gam is what we get again. The very first one is the early Semitic script. Next, you have middle Semitic and then you have late Semitic script. All right. The late Semitic script became our number three. All right, so now we're on to um, new material. All right, so we're gonna take our time through this part. All right, and again, make sure you have your, uh, your pencils and pens ready to go over this because again, um, it's important for us to get this understanding so that in the future, you'll learn how to write in Hebrew yourself. You'll be able to look at the Aramaic or look at the actual um, Paleo Hebrew and understand what it's talking about. All right, so here the, I'm going to just say character. I'm going to try to stay away from word. I might say word still. Um, the character or letter, dal, is related to door. Now, it also has several other meanings associated with it. It can mean a back and forth movement, like a swinging back and forth of a door or a tent door. All right. It also can mean to dangle. All right. It also can mean weak or poor as one who holds their head or dangles their head down low. All right. So the image you kind of get is look at the, uh, the, the top line as a banister or some type of overhang. And then that bottom piece is the flap of the tent door or the door that you come in and out of. It's that tent door, that flap that holds down that you would come in and out of, so to dangle as well. That's the function of a tent door. That's what it does. It allows you to come in and come out. There's movement that goes in and out. So when you're trying to describe something, that's how you're doing it. So for instance, I'm trying not to jump ahead too much, but for instance, when you hear about chariots, right? It doesn't necessarily mean chariots. It just means that is an example of speed at that time. It'd be like if I were to try to describe um, something moving fast, I could probably say cheetah because um, cheetah's fast, right? I could probably say car or airplane. I have to try to associate whatever it is I'm trying to talk about with what I can talk about right now, like what I can describe, right? And so like, if you're seeing stuff moving and you know, chariots flashing like lightning, you don't know what that thing is. You just like, it moves like a chariot fast, like, a, like, like fire. 
So you're trying to be descriptive in regards to what it is you're seeing. It's not necessarily always literal. It's more related to the function of a thing than literally that's what it is. And that's uh, where the translations get kind of messed up. Because when you're looking, when the translators are looking at things from a Eurocentric Western mindset, from their culture, they're not, they're not going to fully get it. They're just not. They won't fully understand. Um, they're taking things literally. And so you see scriptures, you like, that don't even make no sense. And it's because they literally translated the text, not looking at the function of what it's talking about. All right, so the sound for the letter dal is D as in door, as well as obviously the Greek and the Arabic and Latin Roman equivalents. All right, this is also, um, you know, transliterates into that. So the early Semitic pictograph character of the doll looks like that in the middle Semitic which then uh, evolved into the late Semitic. All right, the middle Semitic is where we get our number four. And give me a second, I'm gonna move this out the way. Okay, I can see now. All right, so again, so from the middle Semitic, that evolved into our number four in the Latin Romantic languages. All right, any questions before I move on? Any questions on the doll? Or in modern Hebrew, they say Dalet. Uh, one question, the, the, the third from the left, that, that's also middle, or is it just the two? Uh, not the two, but is it just the second one? So the first one is early. The middle one is always going to be the middle. And okay. then the late is going to be the one on the right. OK, late, my bad. Appreciate no, you're good. That. No, you're good. I, I try to arrange it so you have basically early, middle, and late. Um, okay. In some cases, like in the uh, future uh, characters, I'll put out the actual um, modern Hebrew or the Aramaic Hebrew, but I'm just trying to keep it simple right now in regards to, so you understand the root. Okay. okay. Um, this is your Dalet or your doll. All right. And this is how uh, it progressed over time. Okay. I have a question too. Um, in regards to how the letters or the, the symbols change through time, was it changing because different people was using it or was it, what was the reason for the changing, I guess, from like the pictograph to the late Semitic? So, um, good question. Great question. Um, essentially, what it comes down to is all the above. Um, we were using it, obviously, other uh, Semitic peoples, Abrahamic descendants and surrounding um, people were using it. And over time, it's just a matter of evolving with the times. Again, you're just looking at the font or the script. Like, so no different than right now, what do you have? You, you can go online right now, download for free or pay to get the English alphabet in like 300 different fonts. So depending on what you want your font to look like, you can pick whatever font you want. And okay, that looks cool. If you're doing marketing and advertising, you can just pick a font and you know um, switch it up and use that. And so what you're having is that different people over time took the root foundation of, of language and they evolved it to fit their culture. Meaning the Hebrew reads from right to left, top to bottom. But the problem you have is that some people decided, you know what, we don't want to go from right to left. We want to go from left to right. And so you'll have them take the same character and flip it the other direction because instead of reading from right to left, they're now reading from left to right. Um, I'll tell you guys a secret. 
Some of you guys uh, know this from my past teaching. Some of you don't. Um, in regards to our distant cousins, all right, um, and obviously they're, they're whited out extensively, but the Japanese, the Japanese paternally, it's, that's been tested. Roughly 75% of Japanese men have paternal DNA that goes back to Shim. When you look at the Japanese kanji script, which really goes back to the Ainu script is the root. The Ainu that have been basically bred out, okay? Or let me put it this way. They've bred themselves out because they're the root. The Ainu actually have their DNA that goes back to Shim. It's a haplotype D is in Delta or Dao. Um, the Ainu script is a variant of Hebrew, of late Semitic Hebrew. The difference is that they'll have some characters sideways, they'll have some characters upside down. And so now that I've said this, you're gonna look at Japanese writing and be like, oh snap, that's darn near Hebrew. It that's just wild. basically turned it, it turned it upside down or sideways, different things like that. So um, I have to say the closest written language as, as close to the Hebrew as possible is going to be the Japanese. The Japanese or the Ainu, I should say correct, correction, the Ainu script is a variant of Hebrew. Because um, what they don't want to tell you is that there was a split where some of us from the line, line of Shem went to the east and some of us like Abraham went to the west. And then the Hamatic or Kamic folks that were in our land and our territory, Joshua, you know, put in that work and they left and went to the east. That's, you have your Canaanites and your other Asiatic people, Asians, that went to the east because they got kicked out by Joshua. Um, but that's a different story. That's a different lesson. Um, more right. What about the Phoenicians, the Phoenician scripts? Phoenician script is the Hebrew script. It's all one and the same as far as the root. Um, when you go back, you say Phoenician, you say Canaanite, or you say Hebrew, it's all one and the same. Okay. okay. At the root. So again, what you have is over time, um, everybody, okay, I'm going to try to keep it tight. Um, everybody took the root language and mixed it up. So like I said, some decided instead of going from right to left, they're going to go from left to right. Um, some decided to say, you know what, we're going to do our own thing. And they created their own different language altogether. All right. Um, but it's all rooted in the same. It all has the same root. And so again, over time, every culture basically modified it and, and did it, you know, kind of added on to it. And so like in modern times, right, you have us to where um, Hebraically, as Hebrews, we've taken the English language and we've modified it to create our own sub-language. And then they slightly derogatory call it Ebonics, which is a slight jab and some other stuff, uh, but they call it Ebonics because they know we come from the nigger river, thus niggers, right? Um, it's a situation where uh, you have the Ebony, the bony people. So Ebony is not just black, Ebony is a people. There's actually mm -hmm. an Ebony state in Nigeria. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all tied together. That's what it comes down to. All right, um, we're getting to the next two characters which are really, really popular, really famous. Um, characters to, to look at um, and some of the hardest to break down. So you have the letter or the pictograph, hey, all right. And this is an image of a man standing with his arms raised up or raised out. And this means to behold as when looking at a great sight. It also can mean breath 
or a sigh as one does when looking at a great sight, like, like basically like, oh, you know, behold, look, imagine a guy that's sitting there. It's a, it's a dude on the earth and the most high cracked the sky open. It's like, I am. The first thing he's going to do is probably that pose right there and then fall to his face. <laughs> right. That's a look of oh, shock. Yeah. That's a look of like, oh my, you know, oh my, yeah, I can't even believe what I'm seeing right now. And so again, you're looking at a great sight, behold, breath. Um, you're looking at revelation. You're looking at a revealing. Um, it's like look and see. It gives you that type of, um, of, of understanding. All right. So again, um, this word can mean breath or sigh as one does when looking at a great sight, meaning of the letter of the hey is behold, look, breath sigh reveal revelation from the idea of revealing a great sight by pointing it out like look and see so that's the function that's the character let's dig deeper all right so again the sound of that character is the h sound This is a sound that can be made. Again, every culture and language is going to have a different type of tongue, how they're comfortable speaking. So a lot of times you hear that there's no H in the Greek, but there is. They just don't have a breathy H sound. They have an S sound. So this actually became the Greek character or letter epsilon. That's with an sound. Now this also is commonly and mainly used as a prefix in your words that means the. As in Hashem. The name. The. Look. Behold. It, it puts a stamp on it, like, look at this, look, behold. The revealing of. So when you, when you see or you hear the word Eretz, that means the land, the earth. So again, the hay is going to be at the beginning of a word to as a prefix, revealing something of importance within the sentence. All right, so on this one, I decided to put the actual um, um, modern Hebrew or the Aramaic Hebrew, or you can say the biblical Hebrew, okay? Um, because most of the Biblical Hebrew is going to be in the Aramaic font. All right, so the early Semitic or Hebrew He evolved to the middle Semitic character of He by rotating 90 degrees to the left, which then evolved into the late Semitic script, which you see there below. which evolved to the modern Aramaic we know of today. This Middle Semitic is what the Greeks and the Romans, thus the Latins, went ahead and turned to become their letter E. And the number five. It eventually became the number five. Would these so, be one of the characters uh, that's consisted of in the Most High's name? Say like, again. Clarify that. Like how you would spell his name out? Would this be one of the characters that you would use? This one right here? Yeah. Yes.
I have a question. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, from some previous teaching, I had um, a paleo figure that looks like the stick figure, but it doesn't have any feet down below. It kind of looks like a worshiper or like a ghost at the bottom. Have you ever come across that? Um, I have to see it to, to give you a direct answer, but that isn't, that's, I have to look at that and see, you got to show me what that looks like to see, okay. but there, like I said, there's, um, a variance between all these in regards to different cultures would modify it a certain type of way, um, for their own purpose, you know, but that the first one is the root and then you go into other ones. So like, um, there's additional ones that are rooted in all this but again what i'm showing you is i'm showing you the early the middle and the late and then the aramaic i, don't, I only have so much space to show you guys that you can actually see it on the on the screen but yeah show me that um send me a, a image of that i'd be curious to look into that okay i have a question too in mm -hmm. regards to um the aramaic so when we see it, when we see it written in like the modern kind of Hebrew script, and that's the yep. that's the Aramaic script, it's not it's not pronounced. Is it pronounced the same way as as Hebrew, or is Aramaic also like another language? No. So that's the thing I talked about last time. Um, okay. Aramaic is a font. That's it. Okay. It literally is a font. Okay. It's like we don't. I, you know, I don't speak Arial. You know. <laughs> right i got you <laughs> or tacoma or something like that like that's not yeah. that's not how that works um when you're talking about the writings now the difference does come down into dialect okay and that is something that we do have to deal with later because everybody's going to have a different dialect but in general the sound is going to be similar now when you look at what the ashkenaz folks did when they tried to reconstruct this is they went based off of the uh, Sumerian texts. They went off of some of the Phoenician texts. They went and said, well, what do these um, Edomites do? So they, they're like, what, what do these, um, how do the Yemeni speak in their, their Semitic language? And so they analyze how they speak. They go to some of the different, um, you know, the different groups to listen to how they speak their version or variant of Hebrew. And that's how they were. They looked at the Arabic as well. How does that, because Arabic is a Semitic language as well. So how do the Arabs speak in the Hebrew? They call it Arabic because they have an Arabic dialect to it, but it's still a variant of Hebrew. Um, it's just an Arabic font. So um and that's real crazy when you look at the arabic which i i'm not even trying to even dig into that i wish i i you know i dug into the hebrew the greek and the russian that's my stop i i can't deal with the uh with the arabic but when you look at the arabic a lot of their stuff is like cursive hebrew that's upside down it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy crazy for real uh, but when you look at it, you're like, okay, now it makes sense when you try to deconstruct the Arabic to figure out like what, what these things are. But basically, it's a cursive language. That's why it looks funny. And then it might be upside down and backwards. So it, it's, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, um, the only thing you really have to worry about is depending on where you're going to is the dialect. So like I'll tell you, one of the things right now that frustrates me a little bit is that you have everybody named mom from the 12 tribes is trying to claim that their language is the original hebrew which is stupid it's ignorant and it's it's um divisive is the word i'm looking for so right now you got folks from the congo that want to say oh the congo is bantu language is the root uh hebrew language and all the other stuff is fake it's yiddish it's the white man stuff and so they got the truth. And so what they got is all it is. Okay. Then you got folks that are saying, okay, no, Yoruba is, is the root Hebrew. Now you got folks that are from Ghana saying, nope, the Twi is the, is the root Hebrew language and everybody else is garbage and trash. And what you have is you got a bunch of Hebrews from the 12 tribes that are discovering who they are and they're discovering, oh, snap, we naturally speak a variant of Hebrew. 
this word, that word, every other word means this in the biblical Hebrew. They're still using the biblical Hebrew or the Aramaic Hebrew as a root to fall back on. They're just looking at their modern dialect and how they pronounce things in regards to saying, okay, man, we are the people. You know, them Hebrews in, the, them Hebrews in America are jumping off and they're talking about how, you know, we, we the Hebrew Israelites and by blood we're related to them. Oh, snap. Our language has many key components to the actual Hebrew. But in pride, which is an issue we deal with as people, that arrogance and pride, we really want to come off and be like, no, nah, no, nah, man, that Bantu Congo is, is the, it's the truth. It's all, it's, that's it. And that's all. And everything else is trash. Can't, I can't talk on it. And it's like, listen, we're 12 tribes. We're 12 tribes scattered all over the earth. I'm happy that you found some biblical truth in your language and your tongue. That's awesome. It helps us all out. But we got to stop this um, trying to act like we are the only ones and we got it all figured out amongst those 12 tribes. We're 12 tribes united. We have to be united as one. We can't go through this acting like we are the end all be all of being the Hebrew Israelite. We all have components of the truth and we have to embrace that and embrace each other. We can't have this divisiveness like, you know, uh, the Kikuyu is the only truth or, you know, the um, Kikongo is the only truth or the Luba is the only truth or, you know what I'm saying, the, 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 um, the Ibo or the Yoruba or the Twi or the, like, no, we gotta stop that. We're 12 tribes scattered. You know what I'm saying? And so we have to try to reconstruct this um, as best we can. You have some of those folks that all they speak is Northern Kingdom dialect. Some folks, all they have, they, they literally have the middle, their, their current language heralds back to the middle Semitic Hebrew. So instead of saying uh, Shabbat, they'll say sabata. Where then you got other folks that are from the Southern Kingdom that actually do say Shabbat. Or Shalom. It's no different than we got folks in America, we sitting there talking about red bones. Red bone, red bone. And it don't even mean red bone, but that's how we understood our ancestors to say it. We thought they talking about some red bone. And they literally were talking about a red or ruddy Igbo. Igbo as in the tribe. So when your mama, your great grandmama was calling your mama a, a red bone, it was more or less like a red Igbo. Not red bone, like a bone, a dog bone. It was red Igbo because they knew of themselves as Igbo. Because the majority of us, at least in the Americas and some places in the Caribbean, come from either Igbo or Yoruba, primarily, as far as the diaspora in the Caribbean and South America and in uh, the Americas, as far as like North America. So didn't mean to go off too long, but yeah, there we go. All right. This is one of my favorite characters, pictographs, and uh, the pictograph has so much meaning to it. In modern Hebrew, it frustrated me when I was learning Hebrew. I was like, what am I doing with this word? Don't nobody know what this word is. Is it a va? Is it a wa? Is it a va? What is this word? What is this thing? All right, so the er, original pictograph used in the early Semitic script is what you see right there. All right, so it looks like a Y. And guess what? Uh, this is the biblical root language for your letter Y, your letter W, your letter U, because literally a W is two U's together. Um, your letter V, man, it, it, that's why this, this particular pictograph be messing folks up all day long. 
I know y'all that been studying Hebrew like me, y'all, man, I know y'all have got messed up off this one. You're like, what is going on? So this is an image of a tent peg. All right, tent pegs were made of wood, were shaped in a Y to prevent the rope from slipping off. All right. Now, this truly, when you look at it, it is a wav. It's not a W, it's not a V, but the best way we could do in trying to pronounce this is going to be a W sound. More like a W sound. It's not a W, but that's the best we got. Now, again, Hebrew is based off function, all right? So, peg, hook, this letter, character, pictograph is frequently used as a prefix to words to mean and. Guess what? It's a conjunction. Think of a tent peg, a wooden tent peg that you are using to conjoin two words together, to conjoin two sentences together, to conjoin two thoughts together. This is what you're going to have at the, as a prefix to that word. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. You guys, let me know. You yes. guys, I'm, I'm, I'm mute yourselves. Let me know. I don't, don't want to lose nobody. So just talk to me. Let me know. Yes. Just give me. We good? Yes. May I yes. ask yes. a question? Oh. May I ask a question? Absolutely. Hi. How? Um, you stated that it was the root of the U, the V, the W. Uh, would that also include and the, the y. X? Would that also include the X, the letter X, or is mm. that a, the a derivative derivative of another character? That's a different character. It is okay. Yeah, you. you're you're looking at your Y, your V, mm -hmm. your U, and your W. Okay. All root back to this one character. Okay, thank you. So I have a question too. Um, mm -hmm. uh, get rid of things that I found earlier that are incorrect. I have on my notes that it can also be pronounced with an O sound. Yes, depending on what's next to it. So again, that's again. So like I said, right? It's the root of a U, W, right? It's the sound of the U, right? So U. So okay, I can't get super nerdy on y'all because that y'all be like, okay, more Dwayne has gone out <laughs> no, there, no, come on with like, it more. out there, out there. One might be no, this for will be real. the one letter. This is the this is the letter though. This is the letter. This, this will be the letter. This is gonna be the one. All right, so. In general, um, as a prefix to a word, it's going to be a like a way sound, like a wo. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be a wo sound. Okay, if it's in the middle of a word, it's like if not a prefix, it's actually in the word. Then it's it's gonna be um, in like a vowel. Yes, it's gonna be like a wo a wo sound. Like for me, like if 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 I were to say um, like not Yahovah, right? I would I could say um, Yahu, Yahu. Yo, hate, so, why hate? So I'm saying Yahu. I'm saying Yahu. Mm. You gotta hear them how I'm saying it. I'm saying Yahu. Like so, if you were to say Yahoo, we say Yahoo, Yahoo, right? Yeah. You can get away with it. No one's gonna beat you up, <laughs> okay? But it's it's you can also more authentically say yao. It's you have to relax your mouth a little bit when way you say yao. So um, yeah, it's like yawa. Mm -hmm. So it would be like if you're saying like Jehovah or Yahovah. It's really like more or less Yahweh. Yeah. Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Everything don't got to be a hard. These German folks in, in Ashkenaz, they, they got to make everything all dramatic and hard sounding and stuff like that. 
not everything's hard like that. Um, oh man, I can't go too deep into it. But anybody that studied like the Bantu languages or uh, West African languages and how they add words together, like each word by themselves might sound a certain type of way. But then when you combine those words together, it's like a brand new word. Even though you're taking word A, word B, and you're adding them together, when you put them together, they're not going to sound as individual, like so, so um, harsh with the different um, sounds. It's going to flow a little bit different. Um, but that's for a more intermediate level than this. I don't want to, I want to just give an introduction. This is like a, just understanding. So I'm going out there a little bit, but yeah, you would say, um, um, the, the wall sound is a, is a W sound. So, whoa. I feel like we do that in our, in our dialects of English too. Like if I was to say like, you know what I mean? Like right. I'm not saying all the words. Do you know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Yeah. We don't do that. Like, mm, that's not how we actually talk, but you know, depends on where you're from, what tribe you're repping. All right. So um, a lot of these folks, these European folks that do the studies and they dig in to try to figure out this stuff, they, they neglect Africa for some reason. Um, I actually found this image in Mali. This is a tent peg in Mali in Africa. This is your wolf. This is what it, they were referencing. That's a tent peg. That is a wooden tent peg from a Hebrew people in Mali. That's what they were referencing when they, that's what they knew. That's an actual tent peg. Whereas the Europeans speculate, we believe it was a tent peg. That literally is a tent peg. That's really in use. Like they had that on the auction block for some, you know, folks to buy and spend money on because they stole it. So you would put the, uh, you would tie it down at the base of the wav. And so because it's forked like that, it would not get loose because of the friction of that, of that, of that um, split, of that Y shape. It's not going to fall off. It's not going to slide off, put it that way. All right. So I've also seen some other um, West African things like that too, where it's like a, uh, they also use that same shape as a ladder and they could climb up. Like in Mali, they have those two story like um, homes. They mm -hmm. also like perch it up against the wall. They have like big ones that they use as like ladders too, which is cool to see like the similarity of that too. So um, any other questions on that before we move on? We're almost done with this portion. Maury, I have a question uh, on, yep. like, I'm sorry, on the, um, the wall, isn't, wouldn't that be similar to how in um, Acts it talks about how um, Yahusha was hung on a tree? And isn't that similar to the way he was crucified? As far as the shape, I don't know, personally. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'd be speculating. Because I've seen it like that, where it's like, mm -hmm the Y shape and then in between that, that's where they hung the- Where the person was at, yeah. Right. I personally don't know. I could out only be speculating on that one. Okay. But that's something definitely uh, to research and look into. One more, well, one question, Maury. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I got this Nazarene version of the Basora. It's got a lot of stuff that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And um, how we normally would write it Z-A-V or W-A-W, uh, w would you say UAU -U would be another kind of way to pronounce it similar to WAW? If your mind can wrap your, wrap your head around that, you could possibly try to do that. I mean, it's still the same thing. I mean, um, you'd have to wrap your mind around how do I even pronounce that? They, they how do I pronounce UAU? It'd be like it sounds wow, very like like the way the example they gave like uh, instead of Dawid or David mm -hmm. you put the U the U A U and it would be Dawood 
So it, like you said, it kind of gives like a either a woo or a ooh if it's between stuff. Yeah, you know? it it depends on if it's the between. Like I would get, I wouldn't even mess with that. The reason why I'm saying that I wouldn't mess with that is I would rather learn it as it is. Okay. Meaning. Um, hold on a second. All right. Meaning, when I actually see the character, okay, in the word, I know how it's supposed to sound. I'm not gonna try to use. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna try to try to use Latin characters to describe the phonetic sound of the word. Like that's why I like the scriptures, uh, Bible. Because on certain words, they just put the Hebrew in it. It's like, we're not going to mess around, try to mess with this. Like, we're going to just put yod heh vav heh and leave it like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, i I rather just see it as it is and then pronounce it than try. Because the, the, the problem you have is because uh, arrogance and pride that we have a problem with is you got folks that will be online trolling that I want to argue in English Latin characters, how to transliterate Dawid or Yahweh, and they want to battle over the slave master's language, how it's supposed to be written. That's foolish. And for them folks like that, I'll straight up, I got, I have uh, the, the Hebrew um, Aramaic on my phone as a, as a keyboard. I'll write out a whole message in just straight Hebrew and then be like, there you go. Does <laughs> you want to play games? I'll just drop a Hebrew on you and see what you, where you at. It's like, stop trying to play games with transliterations. You know what I mean? Like there's no, there's no one way to transliterate the name. So you're going to have some folks that go Y-A-H-U-A-H -H for Yahuwah. That's how they want to pronounce it. You got some folks that do Y A H W A H, Yahwa. You got some folks that go Y A H U W A H, Yahuwa. Listen, all you're trying to do is transliterate, meaning the pronunciation of the words. You're just trying to transliterate them as best you can into a foreign language. Like, stop bossing up and getting swollen in the chest off of something as simple as, simple as that. Like, that's foolish. We don't got to do that. You know what I'm saying? We just don't. It's like, listen, um, what I would say is, you know, each person is going to do what's best for them to understand. But in general, I would have just simply rather know that um, when you have the wall at the beginning of a word, it's gonna have a like a uh, a, a wah way sound on the on the word as a prefix to the word that that designates that you're it's with it it's it's like and all right that's your official and character on on a front of a word is that all right if okay. it's trying to like a Dawid or Dawood, there's some that do that. There's some that do say Dawood. But again, that depends on the dialect. You're still looking at the wo 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 sound, which is why you have the birth of your W, your U, and your Y. So, um, I mean, it's deep. But here you go again. You're looking at the early Semitic script. You're looking at the middle Semitic script. And then you're also looking at the late Semitic script, which was put into the Aramaic on the far right, you see right there, or the modern script. All right. Um, this also became the number nine and also came the letter F. But after it, they got rid of it later, the Greeks got rid of it later.
That was a Greek thing, and then they got rid of it. They tossed it out. All right, any questions? Um, yeah, I have one. It's not pertaining to this character. It's, it's for the olive. Like, when we say um, Elohim, should we really be saying, like, Elohim? Um, you can say Elohim, or it's Ol it's literally uh, Olu. It's how it will be best pronounced. Okay. But you're talking about Olu, or you're talking about, um, like, again, the singular like when Mashiach was on the on the cross or he's on the tree hanging and he said Eli Eli he didn't say Eli Eli that's how they pronounce it to say Eli Eli but he was really saying Oluwa Oluwa which is the singular of like you're saying like my Elohim my El so how they write it, they say, if you were to try to be very um, European in how to say, say it, it's more or less like, Eloi, Eloi. But it's really Oluwa, Oluwa. Lama Sabachthani. So again, the battle we have is that we're dealing with the um, anglicized, Western Eurocentric, we're dealing with that. All right, that's the that's the challenge that we have. We're dealing with the way they choose to pronunciate it. Everything is L, um, Elohim. That's the Europe. The Europeans studied that. The Europeans taught that. And then you have folks like us that are trying to regain and recapture the um, the knowledge of our history and our language. And so we repeat, we, we repeat what they're saying um, as it's the gospel truth because that's all we were taught. So the Ashkenaz folks say it this way, we say it that way. You know what I mean? The, um, you know, the, you know, British, you know, Germanic folks want to say it a certain type of way based off their tongue, again, British and Germanic, right? They're going to say it the way they say it. They're going to teach it the way they teach it. And so you got a bunch of copycats that just imitate what they've already said. But now you have it where you do have the Bantu languages being made manifest. You have um, um, a lot of us, that, you know, from um, from the uh, Igbo or the Bamon in Cameroon. You have Bamaliki. You have the Yoruba. You have the Ghanaians from you know, the, the Twi language. Um, you have all these different Bantu speaking peoples, Bantu, nigger, Congo speaking peoples that are going, wait a minute. We use that same word, but we don't say it like that. We say it like this. Or we have that exact same words, but we say it backwards. Meaning over time, the prefix became the suffix or the suffix became the prefix. So um, with the awakening of the Israelites, 12 tribes worldwide waking up, instead of bossing up on each other, like we got it all sewed up and we got the original, which is stupid. We should be looking at it from the standpoint properly, like, listen, let's connect with one another. Let me get my, you know, Kikongo and you get your Baluba and you get your um, Kikuyu and you get your limba, and you get your uh, your um, your um, your ibo, and your yoruba, and your tree, and let's all come together to find the similarities in the script and the words, and go from there. That's what we should be doing instead of trying to boss up on each other like we get, we the latest and greatest, and we got it all figured out. We're we the only ones. We're not the only ones. We have each other. We have to embrace each other. Um, Man, that's that's a whole different topic of conversation. But um, all right, anybody else have any um real questions? Quick, real quick, have you ever heard the wah? I have another note saying that it's short though. Have you ever heard 
you ever heard it associated with the short O? Something happened with your mic. Say again. Um, have you ever heard the Y associated with the short O? Give me an example of a short O. Uh, like O instead of O. Like, is that where people get Yehoshua? Um, see, it's it's no, it's more like a wool. Okay. Oh, like a woe as opposed to an oh. Okay. Right. Again, the when you're doing your studies and you, li and you listen to these white folks, I'm just keep it simple. These Europeans, let's keep it proper. They're taking their it's their culture. Get out their culture. Like you can you can you can start from there because that's where you at. Okay. But don't stay there. Um we gotta keep it tight. We gotta keep it tight to to the biblical root to um a more african root okay instead of a germanic or english or turkic root because that was messes up they're they're still trying to transliterate it into their tongue there is just another variation of trying to translate it into their tongue so instead of it being like yaoshua type of thing it's Wuxia. Okay. And you're like, well, I didn't understand that. I know because you have an English mindset. Your mind is not adjusted to that tongue yet. Not everything is so hard, but in English, it has to be hard. You know how they talk all proper and they have to do it a certain type of way. It's not always like that in, in, the, in the Hebrew like that. So if you were to try to do a hybrid, you would more properly say Yahushua. Yahushua Hamashiach. Yahushua. I'm not saying Yahushua or Yahushua or Yahoshua. It's Yahushua. Which is why you have them say Joshua. That's why they came up with Joshua. That's the best they could come up with when it came to Yoshua. It said, sound like Joshua to me. So we're going to say Joshua. But then also, again, dialect, Northern Kingdom or Southern Kingdom, they may say Saya. And then you got them saying, well, for that type of dialect, we'll say Isaiah. So depending on dialect, someone might say Is, Y, Is, or yeah. Depends on how they want to do it. Because again, the Aleph in some dialects is supposed to be silent. So why are we why are we putting a uh on there? Although we can do it on certain words under certain circumstances, it might just be Isaiah. So, but again, we're just talking about just general understanding for right now. We're not trying to get super deep. We'll get super deep later on. That's not the, to be a take up the whole time for the um, Shabbat fellowship. I just wanted to make sure that I do at least three characters a Shabbat to help us until we get through all the 22 um, and then some, and then we can go from there. So with that being said, was this helpful? And did you guys have any other questions about any of, uh, you know, Aleph, Bet, Gam, or the Dao, or the Waf, or the Hey? Are these in uh, alphabetical order? Yes, if you were to say, if you use that term, yes, it would be. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been helpful, very helpful. Very much helpful, Mari. Thank you. Very helpful. All right, Extremely. those of you that are confused, go ahead and unmute yourself and just say, I'm confused. If you're confused, because I want to put something together for those that might be just confused, something more basic. Um, if you are confused or, you know, need a little bit more help, with it, just go ahead and let me know. I can't see you, I don't have the chat up, so just let me know. You can go ahead and unmute yourself if you are, um, would like additional help. <laughs> 